Hello and welcome to Box, where we unbox, review and demonstrate the latest tech. Today we have with us the Sayama G Master Gold Phoenix 27 inch gaming monitor. Released in mid-2022, the Yama GV2790QSU is easily an excellent choice for displaying high-performance games at their best. Taking it out of the box, you get all you need to set it up just within the opening. Accessories-wise, you get all the cables you need from HDMI, DisplayPort and USB A to B. Alongside this, you also get a handy user guide, power cable and of course the stand legs. With the supporting arm already pre-affixed, it's really easy to set up and get going. The V-shaped stand legs simply screw into the base of the arm, leaving this as the only assembly step required. For a 27-inch monitor, it's pretty lightweight and easy to manoeuvre, especially with the cap insert on the back stopping it from extending when you pick it up for the first time. Placing it on my small desk, the monitor looks right at home, fitting into any space comfortably. The overall design angle that Ayamo has gone for seems to be quite minimal. The all black exterior and very little feature highlights make it easy to blend into both a gaming and office setup, looking inconspicuous in practically any space. Just underneath the box on the back you'll find a good range of inputs and connections. On the left there's a power input and on the right you'll find a headphone port, a 2.0 HDMI for 1440p at 120Hz input, a display port, a USB A to B and finally two USBs. Throughout this video I'll be using the display port connection to my PC, but as a bonus it is also perfect for connecting to a next gen console via HDMI 2, creating a dual purpose for the display to reduce the need for multiple screens. Playing a few trailers I instantly get to see that practically edge to edge display with a super thin bezel. There is a slightly thicker brushed metal style band along the bottom of the screen that houses the onboard controls. There's six buttons just underneath the right hand corner neatly labeling the input, picture modes, volume, enter and the power controls. One of my favorite things about Ayama monitors is the OSD. It's compact and super easy to navigate, clearly showing all the settings in a neat little window. The buttons are nice and responsive and I like the clear sliders for changing the majority of my most used settings like brightness and the black tuner. Now if like me you're a little on the tall side the height adjustments are very generous. At full extension it reaches around 130mm and there's even a slight tilt adjustment up and down to help the screen angle for maximum comfort. Even though it doesn't pan from side to side, you can also enjoy the full 90 degree pivot into portrait mode, making the perfect second monitor for streamers and creators alike. The viewing angle is another indication that this is a top quality display. No matter how sharp of an angle I position myself around the screen, I can still get a nice full picture, which is great considering that there's no pan side to side. Though it's not to everyone's tastes, the matte finish display is also a great guard against harsh glare. Hard light does appear as a soft white patch and hardly affects the visibility at all even in a bright room. Getting into the specifications here we have a 27 inch fast IPS display with a native 2560 by 1440 WQHD resolution. On the gaming side there's a whole host of supporting features including HDR, black tuner, picture modes to enhance colour and brightness depending on the content, AMD FreeSync Premium and of course a combination of that super fast one millisecond response time and a max 240Hz refresh rate. Colour and contrast appeared beautifully vivid across a whole host of content, standing out at its best in darker light conditions. I feel that standard definition content didn't stand out as well with the matte display, but HD and even 4K content stood out sharp and distinct. Now brightness isn't the strongest aspect of this monitor. At 400 nits I often found myself bumping up the brightness between 80 and 100%, especially with those darker games, but I don't think this took away from the overall quality here, easily making it up with those top quality features like the black tuner for bringing out details in the shadows. One thing to point out is the wide variety of picture modes ranging from power saving to specific genre enhancements. Eco mode did naturally dim the brightness which is something you might not need but the iStyle colour presets were helpful in boosting colour and brightness, especially in racing games and RPGs. It's a quick fix if you like to switch up game genres often and it's easy to adapt the picture without having to spend several minutes fine tuning the picture to your tastes. With new monitors it's highly important to check for any deformities from the start. I did a quick check for dead pixels and overall colour uniformity and I was pleased to see that there was nothing to worry about here. In terms of IPS glow and backlight bleed, the black and white images showed solid which is great to see right out of the box. When it comes to sound you do get two 2 watt internal speakers. Straight away I didn't find the quality to be overly rich and detailed. It seemed to do this part sufficiently enough when it comes to just hearing game sound and watching videos on YouTube, but for getting intricate game sound on a professional level it can sometimes be difficult picking out individual footsteps or noises in competitive matches. It's loud enough on full volume to pick up a decent sound output when sitting nearby or across a small room which is good to know for spaces like bedrooms and apartments. As always I know it's hard to take my word for it so here's a quick sound sample to get an idea on the quality on offer here.
Now let's get to the important part, the actual gameplay. I played a handful of games like Halo Infinite and Forza Horizon 5 to get an idea on how well it could handle fast-paced, high-performance games. I found that with all the game-specific features working hard in the background, like free sync and the high refresh rate, I didn't see any annoying imperfections like tearing or stuttering that came to my immediate attention. Cutscenes were just as vivid and smooth as the actual gameplay, and even with the larger sized screen than I'm used to, I could see so much more detail, making it more immersive than ever. For a low-cost monitor, the quality is surprisingly good, easily perfect for the casual or more advanced gamer. It was great that I could adjust the picture in seconds if I needed to, and the quality didn't differ at all between the types of games that I tried. The real test here was with Forza Horizon 5 as I reached a max speed of 145 miles per hour, the picture kept up with the pace effortlessly, letting me play the game as smoothly as it was intended. On top of the ultra-fine PC gaming, it even held up nicely when switching over to the Xbox Series X2. Now I know it only really supports 1440p at 120Hz compared to the other Ayama monitors that allow 4K, but even in HD, I thought the picture was still sharp and vivid enough to enjoy playing the same games on a different machine within the same setup. Overall, I thought this monitor was more than I expected for a low-cost display. The quality is consistent, the gaming features support everything I wanted to play, and the connectivity was just enough to help me connect to multiple machines for the ultimate gaming setup. It's got some great height adjustment for the taller gamer, and the colour really pops, making the most of explosive cutscenes in my favourite titles. So if you're looking for a monitor that supports a wide variety of games, while easily fitting into any PC setup, then this monitor is definitely one to watch. So what are your thoughts on this 27 inch Gold Phoenix Ayama gaming monitor? Let us know in the comments below and if you like this video don't forget to like and subscribe to Box where we have plenty of hands-on reviews on the latest tech. And as always, thanks for watching.